it's Ashley Cunningham here and I am really excited to be speaking with you today on spirit animals. Um, there's a few different types that I want to talk about and how we can connect with them and why we would want to connect with them. First and foremost, um, the why. Why would we want to connect with spirit animals or multidimensional animals or loved ones that are loved pets or animals that we've connected with in our physical life um, that have passed on or physical animals? And the primary reason that I can think of that I know I would really like to connect with spirit animals or those various other animal types um, is because um, we can receive so much healing and comfort and support from them that um, I absolutely love to connect and I it just makes me feel so good when I am able to um, you know connect with a physical pet like a physical animal like a dog or a cat or even I can connect with um, birds that are just flying around in my neighborhood um, I really enjoy seeing wildlife, just animals living their best life around me. And I love to connect with their energy and I feel a great sense of comfort and magical whimsy when I am able to connect um, with animals. Um, it's the same feeling when I'm connecting with spirit animals. So spirit guides that are in the shape and energy of animals um, they can come in and we all typically have spirit animals whether we realize it or not. We don't keep them like we would a guardian angel or a spirit guide or a loved one that comes in and consistently supports us. Spirit animals uh, tend to come in with us, come into our energy, help support us, um, work with our other spirit team members um, for a time on maybe a certain situation or in a certain situation uh, or to bring in a certain energy that we need in our life uh, that we're not getting from a different, a different place. So an example of this is when I was first starting to channel, I recognized that there was an energy around me that was not my guardian angels. It was not um, any other type of being that I had encountered before. And it was a spirit animal. And it was actually a great, um, great white, no, not great white whale. It was a, a humpback whale. I don't know why the great white whale came to mind. I think that's from Moby Dick. <laughs> but it was a humpback whale. And um, it was just majestic and powerful, yet gentle and like go with the flow, chill. And the energy was exactly what I needed to feel and kind of embody in that moment. And I really helped me that uh, whale really helped me in the moment that I, I sensed him and uh, the moment that I needed to connect um, with that type of energy and then you know a few days later he drifted off to somewhere else and I haven't connected with that energy since but there's been other animals that have come in and kind of taught me lessons um, there's an oracle card deck. I'll leave a comment in the description box below um, on the title and who wrote the oracle card deck and the illustrations and stuff. But this deck was the first deck that I got and it was about animals. And the book, um, I think it might be called Animal Medicine. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm totally blanking for whatever reason. But I uh, basically was really drawn to this uh, oracle card deck and I got it. It was my first one and every day I would pull a card and connect to that energy. That uh, spirit animal came into my energy and I was learning a lesson um, through and with that animal for the day and it was a beautiful experience. It really eased me into connecting more with my guardian angels, my starseed family, and other beings that I've channeled here on this channel before. So um, I absolutely love connecting with spirit animals and there's so many lessons um, to learn and a lot of energy and um, characteristics really that you can embody as you're connecting to that spirit animal 
and I really highly recommend if you're interested in connecting with a spirit animal, um, either use a deck, kind of like the one that I um, just described, and definitely will include the description below, so look out for that. Um, or you can look at other decks that also connect with spirit animal energy. Uh, or just look around your life and see what kind of animals typically come up for you. Um, what's the energy like? Uh, what animals do you see on a daily basis? Do you have pets? What are you learning from your pets? Um, what is that energy like from them? Um, pets, you know, dogs, cats, birds, any other pet that you could have. Um, they're all of pure love and light energy and they're just so amazing uh, to connect with on a daily basis so um, there's a lot of lessons to be learned and you can easily call in a spirit animal if you want to connect with a specific type of energy call that being in call in that animal and they're going to come in and work with you um, What's interesting, I think I mentioned this, they typically come in and help you for a time and they leave. Um, I haven't seen any other types of spirit guides um, kind of behave in that manner. I'm sure there are others that maybe I'm not aware of, but um, I, I like the idea of being able to connect with a lot of different types of animals and learn uh, through their animal medicine um, to kind of round myself out and to learn in different ways. So definitely reach out if you're interested um, oh, and or you can sh feel free to share your own uh, spirit animal experiences in the comments below that would be really cool to hear your guys's experience with spirit animals and how they help you um, there are other types of animal beings like multi-dimensional animals they are animals that um, can move between dimensions and uh, I actually had a really awesome experience when I was first learning how to channel. I uh, was just like knocked out and I briefly woke up. It was the middle of the night and my arm was like laying out like this and um, I just felt the bed move like a dog had like hopped up on the bed and was like trotting up to me like a dog would you know like a dog's gonna get up on the bed and just flop down right along my whole body with his head right here on my shoulder and kind of do the you know like the big sigh to get comfortable and he wiggled around a little bit and um it was a giant, in my mind's eye, I could see it was a giant Irish wolfhound, like a pure white Irish wolfhound type dog. Um, and it was like really uh, weird uh, to, it was different. I shouldn't say it's weird. It was different to experience that without recognizing what it was. Um, I thought maybe at first, well, maybe it was a past, um, you know, loved one that I connected with in a different experience, but I had... Uh, another medium kind of tune in and they were telling me that this being was really multidimensional and when I checked in on that with my within myself I used discernment to see if that resonated with the energy that I was sensing and what I had experienced that was a big old yes so that was really cool um, and since then there have been several other animals that have come into my life that I know are not past they are alive but they are also not of this dimension and um, they are not of my current reality so it's really interesting to see themselves interject themselves into my daily routine um, but I love it and it, it keeps me engaged and it's just really fascinating and fun to see when they come around so you can always connect with them if you want as well um, i would recommend you ask your guardian angels to maybe arrange an introduction um, i'm not super familiar with a lot of multi-dimensional uh, animals so i don't know um, how it all works with them i'm checking in with my guardian angel now to see um, she says, asking your guardian angels to bring forward energies that might want to connect with you um, is a great uh, path. Um, there are some multidimensional animals who will see your light. So like this um, wolf dog being that I sensed um, come and snuggle with me, um, saw my light and saw that maybe I needed some comforting. And in that moment, he just came and flopped down and we had a really beautiful kind of connection there. And it was really interesting and 
Um, it really helped my spirits in that moment. Um, and I didn't even realize that I needed that. So it was really a beautiful um, gift that that being gave to me. So you might actually have multidimensional animals that just reach out to you because they sense your light. They see you as a bright light and they want to come in and engage with you and connect with you in that way. Um, or they may see that you need some support or love or cheering up. Um, so they definitely will come and help you with that. And I think that's just super awesome and brilliant. And um, I've actually had a lot of dreams with animals in them. And I totally 100% know that um, animals in my dreams are also multidimensional beings that can enter my dreams or spirit animals can enter my dreams and connect with me in that way as well because I've, I've just had dreams where I'm just like hanging out by the pool and the, uh, this one dream I had, it was um, a pit bull jumped into the pool to save me, but I was just like swimming and just ha enjoying myself. And um, the dog came in to save me, but I wasn't like needing saved. And um, I can see him, He I got out of the pool because he was like, weighing me down. I was having a hard time swimming and I got out of the pool and he jumped up and he just sat by me and had the biggest smile on his face and he was a really beautiful like red tan um, pit bull. He was just so beautiful, so happy and cute and ecstatic that I was engaging with that, um, with him, with that energy. So um, dreams are awesome places to connect with animals in other dimensions as well. And um, also, of course, there are physical animals who live here in, on Earth um, in our reality. So like we have our pets, we have dogs, cats, birds, and we have wild animals like the birds that just live in your neighborhood or the elephants, tigers, um, you know, the cougars, the um, manatees, the wild animals of the world, the whales, you know, lots of fish and things. Um, they all also have a beautiful energy that they can give to us or share with us and help us when we need it. And um, I think as you look around your life and as you're noticing animal energy in your life, um, there are lessons to learn, uh, lessons that you can um, absorb, energy that you can engage in and just really revel in and have fun with. Like if you own a pet, you're really lucky because you have a pet right there in your living space that you can connect with and engage with and um, gain a lot of comfort from and also provide comfort and support and joy to. And it's a really a partnership and a beautiful relationship. Uh, if you don't own any animals, say um, you still love animals, but you just don't for whatever reason. I don't have any pets because I live in an apartment and I wouldn't want to, I don't know, I just wouldn't want to have a pet in this apartment. Probably not a great reason, but you know, I just, I don't really see that as being a good idea for now. When I get my own house or if I move to a different apartment, it might change and it probably will change because I really want animals. I love animals, connecting with them and engaging with them as much as possible. But um, if you don't have any, then you can do other things like you can dog sit or pet sit for friends and family. Um, you can uh, go and uh, support local shelters so you can go and volunteer at local shelters and hang out with the dogs and play with them or cats um, you can also foster if you want to engage with animals but maybe not keep an animal for a long period of time you can help foster animals and get them reacquainted with humans and living in a home you can also support um, like wildlife uh, organizations that go and really work very hard to help preserve um, space where wild animals live or help provide medical care to wild animals or protection, whatever they need. I'm thinking of a lot of organizations that work in East Africa or South Africa that support um, elephants uh, as well as other beings um, that live in the safari plains type of environment, uh, the rhinos definitely, um, as well as the elephants, uh, protecting them and uh, 
protecting them from other humans who may want to poach them for their ivory or their horns or whatever the case may be. So there are organizations that will help support um, and protect and uh, keep safe and healthy uh, animals that you might want to engage with or you know engage with that energy. So there's a lot of different ways that we can in our daily life uh, reach out and connect with a, an animal being or you can you know just go sit out in a park and enjoy the animals that are roaming around there. Um, if you are lucky enough to live in a place where um, there is a lot of uh, wildlife, um, go out into like maybe a wildlife preserve um, where you can, maybe there's a space where you can just sit and watch um, and enjoy the scenery and maybe not engage with the wildlife because they deserve to just be off on their own without us. But um, there's a lot of value in just seeing and being around them and um, honoring their energy. So it's it's really cool because we can connect in a lot of different ways, physically, spiritually, emotionally, energetically. It's all um, possible and I highly recommend it. I think in this time um, it's been really interesting to see how um, all of us are so drawn to animals. Um, I've loved seeing all of the articles about how animals are able to, because we have um, kind of slowed down or a lot of us are staying home and we're not out and about as much, uh, animals have been uh, able to reclaim space within our environment. And uh, it's just been really beautiful to see and to see the healing that's been taking place for animals in uh, Gaia. So I think there's a lot of beautiful and amazing energy that we can connect with and support and move forward um, connecting and supporting in a really amazing way. So I hope this has helped you. Um, I just, I was inspired. Actually, I don't think I told you guys. I was really inspired to do this video because um, another being that I've connected with and I've channeled before for you um, is the earth dog that I have um, connected with. He's an elemental being. Um, a few days ago, I was just at work. I was really busy. I was running around. I was a little stressed. I was kind of a little out of balance. And he came and just pushed against my leg with his shoulder. And um, actually he was like really big. So it was like his shoulder, but it was like the top of my hip. He just like pushed against me and um, just reminded me, hey, I just need to slow down, connect, get centered. And um, he really helped me energetically a lot and just calmed me down. And I know a lot of people are really, um, blessed to be able to connect with uh, animals in that way and get calm and because they're just so empathetic and uh, they're really, really powerful um, transmuters of energy. And so this being is really, really cool. And I, I love him so much and I love connecting with him. Um, and so it inspired me to talk about spirit animals and other animals and how we can engage with animal medicine or animal energy in our daily lives. So I hope this resonated with you guys. If you want to actually have a live channeling where you can ask questions about maybe your loved animals that have passed or other animals or your spirit animals, um, definitely let me know. I'm totally open to doing a live channeling where I ask um, for guidance for you guys, um, answer all your questions. Um, and yeah, I think it would be really fun. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I hope you have a good day. Bye.